Why, why do the people think that the soul of the dead are confined to the grave? Ya Allah and Shaitan and Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim I think that the subject of the soul and death and light is a very limited topic in the Muslim community now. Why? Because they become very dunya oriented naturally. When they stop the spiritual training then imagine 90% of these talks are all wiped out. If they're not going to spiritually train how are they going to talk about death? So because of spiritual training and seclusions that's all you're involved with. You're involved with the dead, you're involved with your death, you've involved in the world of light. They've seen themselves dying and Allah asking, do you want to die and just go and it's over for you because seclusions the shaykh can die. And say, well maybe yeah because you're in such a beautiful state why would you want to go back? But then Allah says, then you're not going to be of service. So the purpose of all of this training was to see and witness what we wanted you to witness so that you have yaqeen, now go back and guide people towards this reality. That's why we said their, their path is real, they're not imagining, they're not reading somebody's book. How could you have guidance in reading somebody's book? Have to be your own book, you saw it, you experienced it and as a result Allah sent you back to bring people to it. And as a result of that they're very familiar with the process of death, they're very familiar with the dead. In their seclusions they had many dead people coming to them for guidance. And that Allah showed them the realities within the qabr that the paradise is closed, nothing is open until Allah judges everything. Within the dead and the qabr means then there's going to be a situation of cleansing. Once Allah finish with the cleansing then there's a, an ability for the soul to move around. Many souls are restricted to only that which they know of their families and their loved ones. So then that becomes its own torment because if these souls are following only around where their families are then they get to witness all the difficulty that their families are engaged in, all the bad processes and it can be pretty horrific for, for somebody's soul to only see those realities. It becomes its own form of difficulty and punishment. But for last days Allah has shown to them that the reality of why there's so much death in the last days is because these souls will be given an opportunity to be of service. And that these souls when they die the shaykhs who've been taught in this reality will have permission with Malik al Maut, the angels of death to go to these people who died and say that Allah Almighty will offer you an ability to expand your light. Are you willing to train and to receive that? But there's nobody saying no because they don't want to be stuck with nothing that they didn't achieve. So then they come in droves. The Jaa Nasrullahi wal Fath, Ra'ayt al Nas. That is also an ayat al Kareem that describes how the dead will be coming to the deen of Allah because they see it as real. There's no more barrier, there's no more lie from CNN, there's no more sort of facade that been put upon their ego. They see the religion of Allah and they come in droves to be of service. And that's what Allah wants is, serve my living creation because what's about to open upon the earth of shayateen, the physical people they cannot do it. It requires the support of the unseen. So when they come in droves into the religion of Allah they come with an immense power, immense power because they'll be trained at a different speed and every zikr that they do they, they receive their, their trust at an immediate uh, speed, at an immensely fast speed. As a result the shaykh is surrounded by very powerful lights of these uh, servants of Allah And that what gives more and more power to these shaykhs and everywhere they go and every majlis they attend are with thousands of these types of souls doing zikr inshaAllah. Very important in last days.
I think they're pre-recorded some of these messages. As alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear Sayyidi, what is the reality behind sleep paralysis? InshaAllah, what is the reality, reality behind sleep paralysis? That an attack upon their being means that when we sleep there are many beings of which we're not familiar with and as a result they come with their energy and try to hold someone down with their energy. And as a result with that energy the person is in a position in which they can't move, they can't break away from that and they try to harm individuals. Those whom don't have ta'weez, don't have these spiritual teachings, they can be horrifically abused by these, these entities and these beings. And they live lifetimes along with these families and these people and they, they bother and molest them and they put difficulty upon them and that's, that's a, a torment that is made to them. Means you know that every difficulty Allah has a cure. So when somebody is in this type of difficulty its cure is that Allah hope that they will seek out a remedy. For every sickness there's a cure. So many people whom have had these types of spiritual difficulties they seek out its cure and they find that in normal religious understandings there's very little understanding. So they seek out spiritual religious people and many have come to tariqahs based on difficulties with unseen creatures of Allah So it has its own hikmah and its own wisdom. So when we don't understand all these different spiritual beings and how they affect us, how they touch us, how they try to hold us down then these are the difficulties of life that make us to seek out Allah's reality. Because nothing make you be believe more in Allah than when you start to face the shaitans. When you know the devil is real then by law of opposite you must believe God is real. Because if a devil is after you and, do and doing things to you then of course you naturally think that, oh God must be true and I have to seek out a means in which to protect myself. Then the tariqahs are specialists in this type of protection. The ta'weez, the energy and all the energy practices are to empower the servant on what to recite, how to build their energy so that when that situation is coming they're able to push their energy out and begin to go after that entity that coming after them. And by means of the ta'weez, the ta'weez in the room, the, the recitation of holy surahs before they sleep, keeping themselves in wudu, all of that is building the system of faith that Allah wants from them, right? So it's all, it's all Allah's mercy because those whom live and die with that reality because the shaykhs are always in difficulty of battles, they understand. Can they sleep without wudu? No. Can they sleep without their ta'weezes? No, they have their ta'weez all on, they have their head always covered when they're sleeping because they're continuously in, in, a, in a battle mode with difficulties. So can they eat incorrectly, they try to eat the best that they can, drink the best of the, what they can, make du'a on everything, they do their zikr, they do their awrad, they do their wazifas because they live and die in that reality. And as a result people's faith become yaqeen, become certain. So the people whom are having spiritual difficulties they inevitably have a perfected faith because they've seen the dark side, they've dealt with the dark side. So of course the light then is true for them. It's a matter of how much are they willing to practice and to become perfected in that world of light, to repel, to fight and then to begin to train others to come against that difficulty inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi, I'm wondering when we do meditation and try to connect to the shaykh, does he feel something? I mean does he feel that someone is knocking at his door? In connecting with the shaykh does the shaykh feel something? Uh, no. 
That would be horrific. <laughs> yeah, because then uh, you would be bombarded 24 hours a day with like emails of people asking this, connecting this. No, no, this is, this is a reality that Allah has put upon their soul to be infinite amount of places and infinite amount of… and no limitation on the ability of the soul. So for each student Allah make that soul to appear to them and to be a, a means in which a tawassul, a means in which to connect and to be conveyed of these energies and these lights and these blessings. If anything is needed from the life of the servant that has made themselves and that's what we said they introduce themselves, they email, they, they have a familiarity with the tariqah, they're keeping their communication, they have their sense of loyalty. Those students anything that happens in their file means whatever Allah has written for them their life has a file. That file will notify the shaykh if it's of an urgency or of an importance. When it's necessary, if there's something that is of a grave danger, then Allah through that system notifies the soul of the shaykh and all of a sudden they get a khatir, a thought that the so-and-so is in difficulty and they're to pray and to begin to make a du'a and uh, whatever needs and, and necessary for them. So Allah has safeguarded a system for them, for the shaykhs. As far as the student is concerned, they don't have to worry about, that's their own faith. That's like saying, if I, if I make du'a does Allah hear it? Of course Allah hears it, that, that has to do with your iman and your faith. And if Allah hears it then you have to know that Sayyidina Muhammad hears it. And if you are making du'a and asking something from the soul of the shaykh which is a Muhammadan light, so it is the light of Sayyidina Muhammad then Prophet heard it. So everyone hears it, Allah knows the condition of the servant, ufawud amri inna Allah inna Allahu basirun bi ibad. For Allah knows my condition and He sees my state at all times. So this is not about trying to, to, to prove that, that they hear or not but it's a level of faith in which I begin to believe of course they're hearing. Of course I'm making the connection and I have to make the connection and I have to make the connection to connect with Allah's lights and Divinely oceans of power to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that which is important inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.